You know, you can't just say, well, there's going to be new ways to do energy, so I know the way. And that's what you're saying. And I find that spiritually, I don't know. Oh, Jesus. I find that spiritually questionable and objectionable and stuff. But am I attacking you? No. You are saying your opinion about the universe. You are reacting to a lot of things from meat eating to eating food in general. And I endorse that. You should do that. But one reason I endorse that is so we can have a spiritual conversation. And if there's some notion that I'm supposed to like stay off the criticisms that collapse your view, why? Why are you sharing your path? If our path is intersecting and you're going over there and I've been over there and I have some idea of what you're looking for. And I'm, I'm like, that's the wastelands of, that's where you go to get little curios and philosophical and spiritual toys over in that area. It's like a carnival, right? It's, there's a, you, one should become a scholar and learn all those, but don't be telling me, what are you going to say when this machine fails to produce energy? It will fail to produce energy. Is that a big downer that I know enough about the universe to know that the machine you have described even though there's a lot you haven't described. And, and there you think, well, yeah, but one of the things I haven't described is going to be the detail that, you know, the final thing. And you might not probably consciously be thinking that, but see, I've been there. I've known, I've studied a lot of people's various theories. I have an interest in them. And, um, and when somebody with the spiritual uh, bent in a path uh, goes down there, um, well, it's like, if you really want it to go down there and that's your spiritual path, you should go learn physics and figure out which you can believe and which is up in the air. Okay, because it's not totally unknown. Not everything is equally possible. And you talk about improvements in science and technology, including in evolution, when there was an evolutionary advance, uh, some more um, uh, energetic you know, some better way of handling energy in a biological system, counting that, those thresholds. Yeah, but they don't go back. Somebody that says, hey, I have an idea how we could go back to the old system and get a hundred times more, because this one got ten times more than the last one. Well, no, I mean, knowledge has is always open what you might not learn, but there's a process of elimination, and it's it's a funny thing to think of because this process of elimination is really an inclusion inclusion of our experiences and basically all of our experiences are of mistakes in a sense right even the ones that work later on we'll find out well yeah that worked but for this reason or I was lucky or it was an approximation but you don't go back to the, the failure aspects you're refining improvements right? so um it's fair, you obviously do have this, um, see what I think is that we have the left and the right brain, and it's not as trivially, uh, the characters, their personalities of these two halves of the brain are not what we trivially had, were told in the 70s and 80s and stuff and what most people think, but it's similar, um, and it's hard to exactly divide it, it out. I saw a good explanation that's pointing out that it's, it's certainly not, um, creativity and, and versus analysis because it's more like the brain works this way in an analytic and it works this way in a creative you know so it's it's not anything that simple both halves of the brain work together and yet the connection between them is relatively small I believe per cell it's smaller than other mammals um, so what I think is going on um, is is very material and spiritual at the same time. Okay, they've done the split brain experiments. So we, it, I take it as proven that half a brain has a recognizable uh, human character. It might seem a little bit you know off in some ways, but it has a, a human personality and a human's level of analytic um, of analytic power. Uh, that's not just the split brain experiences, but also people that have a lot of their brain missing can be very ordinary appearing on the outside. 
And a lot of this is because of the redundancy, I think, and the communication that's going on. And what this all means to me is that each of these brains really is two people. They both think they're you, and they communicate basically with ESP. They have ESP with each other. So this has a lot of ramifications for people that use their spiritual powers in their Reiki, because we're all having ESP with the other side now. Why would I call it ESP? Well, there's an actual wire. An extrasensory perception is the wrong word, right? Because it's really um, tele telepathy. Excuse me. So they're, they're speaking with telepathy <laughs> through the corpus callosum. Now, the, what I take is most important is I don't want to characterize one as, you know, I don't know, one is Spock and one is Captain Kirk. Too simple. Um, but there is a good key to what kind of personalities they might have in yourself. Right? And it's that only one half, only one of the pair knows English, for example. Use English as the language. It only, only one knows English. The other side can't speak English. It can't speak any spoken language. So what's left? It can speak symbolic languages, a series of symbols, you know, like it can, it can understand the language of a cathedral where it's packed with symbology and mood. And the way it must communicate is a series of images, you know, including smell, image, and everything because it has telepathy. And our society is dominated by the written word. Um, that's the rules. When you sign something, that's the only time you're supposed to commit all so-called civilized things we have hooked to words, to the point that people, I think, are not listening to the series of images. This means there is a full personality. Like, imagine you are that one of the personalities. You're there, and you can't speak English. You're just as smart as any human, but you can't speak English, but you can speak, you know, like artistic image series and communicate to somebody. And this person's going, geez, why are those images? Oh, I had terrible images of, uh, you know, this horrible thing in my head all day. I just pushed them out. And, the th and this half of the brain's going, no, I'm trying to tell you something important. And this half of the brain by now, and most people probably, is fucking batshit insane because it's been in isolation with this guy over here, the one that would have to speak for it, describe those images in words so that it can interact with society. And so it might often be bad shit insane. And if you go, when you meet people, people that listen to their own series of imagery, and you can find this out because some of it comes to the tip of the iceberg and they mention the imageries they're having. Those are the well-balanced people, whatever the other problems, whatever emotional problems that remain, those are the people that are kind of on planet Earth. And so now a problem is that people, historically what we have is, in, in Christianity, is the symbology is the religious thing. So those people would listen to the left half of their brain, but they pretend it's God talking to them. They wouldn't act immediately on it, and that's the, like, God works in mysterious ways. You might have to blow God off for a while, figure out what does God mean. That's weird God. It's really the other side of their brain. They ran the show, worshipped this thing that's a metaphor for the other side, the imagery side of their brain, and explained it to themselves this way. Then with science, we have people that just think that side's crazy. I'm not going to mention to anybody what it's thinking. And then we have reactionary that are like, no, I don't like the side that's in words, and I'm going to just turn up the, the worshipping of this spiritual symbol. I know what it is because I saw a series of images. And really, those series of images and visions that we have, they're just no more reliable than when you sit down and write a poem. Uh, it can come out beautiful, it can come out wrong, it can come out seeming beautiful, but it's wrong. There's a lot of, um, it's just it's just like the spoken word, but it's in imagery, because that's what half the brain, that's the language half the brain knows. Half the brain knows the language of like, baby in Africa, a brand new well, dirty water, a bison flying, through. you know, there's, you can convey messages that way. We're obviously not expert in the spoken world. And that's half of our brain, okay. <clears throat> so, the solution is that we need to get rid of religion's hold on self-indulgent, crazy 
uh, fun ideas as that's infantile and um, the imagery art side of the brain can do a lot better it can do art art on the scale of a grand artist so we need to up its game a lot um, and I think we do that by promoting art I mean uh, uh, artists are the ones that uh, try to speak this language uh, of the other the other brain